The Greater Akron Bowling Proprietors Association presents a Warner Amex Cable Sports Exclusive. The 1986 Pot of Gold Bowling Tournament with Jim Mitchell and your host for this evening's match, Jaybird Drennan. Oh, thank you. Welcome to Pot of Gold Bowling, like we have every time about this week. And you know, it's a great, great team event and trying for $2,000 first prize. We've gone through six weeks. This is our seventh week of bowling. Let me very quickly give you our leaders right now. Fairlanes at 1116, Stonehenge at 1090, we have Magic City at 1049, Comet Lanes at 1040, Turkey Foot at 1008, Roll Away at 1000, and Falls Recreation at 997. We have three more weeks left to go, and we will cut to the top 10 teams with the most pens. Then we go into match plays. So it's a great event, and we're glad you're with us tonight. Let's get right into a great time. We have Eastgate Lanes and Talbot Lanes, and what an event this is going to be. And to introduce our teams, let's give a great big welcome to Mr. Jim Mitchell right here. Jim. Thank you, Jay. You know, the Pot of Gold Tournament the last couple weeks have had a lot of family involvement. Well, we have the same situation today. The team from Talmadge Lanes, who is the defending champion of the Pot of Gold Tournament, has three family members on it, just like the uh, Eastgate Pro Bowl team. If so, the Pot of Gold Tournament's been a family affair throughout the uh, whole week. Today, the Eastgate, of course, the nine on a telecast, and he's back for his second year. So let's meet the team from Eastgate Pro Bowl. Leading off, average in 208, John Heater. Average in 180, bowling second, Dick Klein. Bowling third, average in 202, and is the U.S. Olympic Committee's Bowler of the Year, Debbie Bennett. Bowling fourth, average in 203, Bobby Moyers. And the anchor bowler, average in 223, and I think it's higher, Rocky Heater. Jay, back to you. Thank you very much. I have Corrine Seif with me, and Corrine's a little bit nervous. Now, are you really, Corrine? Just a little. <laughs> she says, Jay Bird, I can't talk on television. I said, Corrine, you have one of the greatest teams I've ever seen put together, haven't Absolutely. you? Absolutely. You know the Heater family. One of they the best. really are. And Debbie, of course, uh, qualified to go to Bogota to represent the U.S., and, of course, Rocky's been on the Pro Tour, and John's one of the best teachers and bowlers, and uh, just a tremendous team you put together. Well, I wish the mother, Lil, could be here. We missed her today. That's right. Lil was with <laughs> yeah, us last time. She was here last time. How many time? teams did you have try for qualification? We had 15 year. this year. That is really mm -hmm. good. Did a good job. So they have put together a team that has uh, a lot of pins. I would imagine they will be giving up pins before the tournament's over. Maybe today we'll check with that. Yeah. But it's nice to have you with us right nice here. Nice to be here. Thank, Thank you, you so much. All right, Jim, let's check the next team right now here, my friend. Okay, Jay, you know the team from Talmadge Lanes is the defending champion in the Pot of Gold Tournament. Of course, we got five new players this year, but the tradition is still there. This is the second year that Talmadge Lanes has been in the Pot of Gold Tournament, and they would just like to continue with those winning ways. So let's meet the team from Talmadge Lanes now. Leading off, average in 179, Richard Bowers. Bowling second, average in 155, Pat Flanagan. Bowling in the third position at 156, Gary Flanagan. Bowling in the fourth position at a 172 average, Chuck Keenan. And the anchor person at 182, Lou Flanagan. Jay, back to you. Thank you, Jim. Ron Boring is with us from Talmadge Lanes. You had a great team last year, Ron. Yes, sir. We uh, took this tournament last year with a little bit of luck, and I'm hoping to uh, do it again this year, but this Eastgate team looks pretty tough. Did the uh, team that won last year try to qualify this year? Yes, sir. They uh, tried, but this team here just did a little bit better and beat them out. So they're going to be going in. I'll tell you what, that team last year was something, wasn't it? Yes, it was. It was uh, another team just thrown together, but like I say, they come out on top, and uh, we're hoping to repeat again. I tell you, you've got a great team ready for this, Ron. It's going to be a good match, isn't it? Yes, it is. Uh, like I say, Eastgate's a good team, and I just hope we can just uh, stay, at least stay with them. Thank you so much, Ron. We've got a dandy coming right here. So I tell you what, we'll take a little break. Let's give them a great big hand, and we're going to be back in just a moment with Pot of Gold. 
You come face to face with our romantic past and eye to eye with our robotic future. You witness the renaissance of an Italian hill town, stroll a booming Texas campus, visit the Queen's merchants in London, explore the Mexican forest where monarch butterflies winter. You meet a bully president, brave volunteer firefighters, the daring acrobats of old Japan, and the amazing mules of the New South. You discover a whole world in just this one issue of Smithsonian Magazine. And now you can get 12 monthly issues of this remarkable magazine for only $18. Plus, you become an associate member of the Smithsonian Institution, eligible for travel benefits, book and gift discounts. Nature, art, science, history, every month, our whole world. There is no other magazine like Smithsonian. To get the next 12 issues of Smithsonian Magazine for only $18, call toll-free 800-228-1300. That's 800-228-1300. Call now. Whole new worlds are waiting for you. All right, it's bowling time right here for the pot of gold. Eastgate Lanes, Talbot Lanes, as John Heater and Richard Bauer shake hands. And we're ready to go with John Heater stepping up on lane number five. This is going to be a good one. Oh, our qualification jumped a little bit last week, Jim. That sure did, Jay. The scores are starting to pick up a little bit. You know, last year, John Heater shot that big 279 game, and he holds a pot of gold record for most strikes in a row. He had nine strikes in a row last year. So let's see what happens this year. See if he can start right. Oh, almost carried. Hopped up on him right there. John is a good teacher, and, of course, he's had some uh, youngsters there like Rocky and Debbie, fantastic bowlers. Debbie represented us at Bogota, Colombia, didn't she? She represented the United States in Bogota, Colombia this year in the FIQ tournament. All right, let's see if John can get his pair. Here's the shot on the four pin and right there, no problem. All right, Richard Bowers, big 179 average bowler, left-hander from Talmadge Lanes. Pass the word down. Here's the shot crossing over a little bit, and the big one pops up right there. You know, Jay Richard Bowers bowled a uh, 300 game out at Talmadge Lanes, and he was it was the first game ever rolled, the first 300 game ever rolled out at Talmadge Lanes. So that's a nice little prestigious record he owns there. Decline, 180 average bowler. Moving in, and here's the shot, and left the big old 10 pin. Richard uh, is also very much involved in the youth league coordination of uh, all the youth program out at Tommy Chalene. Watch this. Uh, it almost kicked it over, didn't it, Jim? That's a very difficult spare, uh, Jay. The best way to go is go for the three. Every now and then you're going to get lucky and kick the eight pin over into the ten pin. Let's see if we can pick up this ten pin now by Dick. Shot by Dick Klein, moving it over there, and pulled it past just a little bit over to the left. Pat Flanagan will be our next bowler. Pat comes out of that ball. Is it going to come? Not quite enough there. Moved over to the right. 188 pins, Talmadge Lanes will be receiving here. And Eastgate has to give up five pins, I believe, Jim. Debbie Bennett. Here comes Debbie out of the ball. And a beautiful strike. We could probably talk about Debbie for the next hour, day, uh, Jay, with all her accomplishments, but uh, she's had over three 300 games, and uh, that in itself is quite a feat. Here's the shot. Look at this shot, a beautiful spare. Picked up by Pat Flanagan. She's had three 300s, almost as many as Kelly Lenhart, huh, Jay? Uh, here's Gary. Uh, least get Pro Bowl. Let's see how Bobby Moyers does. Here's the shot by Bobby. And oh, man. Left the big gold 7-10. Well, we've seen that quite a bit on the telecast the last couple of weeks. It's just too much bowling ball for the light pins. The ball, the pins just flying around, leaving the 7 and the 10. Gary Flanagan. And he has still tried to fall a little bit. The 6 pin kicked out to leave the 1 3 8 10. So let's see if Bobby, what he does on this. Every pin's important, and he grabbed the 10 pin, knocked it over. Bobby just picked up the tempo a little bit, trying to get more speed, and uh, hoping for the pin to pop out and take out the 7. It's very difficult to do, but sometimes it will happen. Here's the shot. Let's see if we can get the spin. Oh, kicked it around. All right. Here comes Rocky Heater. Stepping up. Eight pins there for Gary Flanagan. Cutting ready for the shot by Rocky. He was on the Pro Tour for a while, wasn't he, Jim? Uh, he's got great style, great form, great timing. 
Here's the shot for Rocky and the five pin. Didn't quite carry for Rocky. They have to do a lot of top bowling. They're going to have five pins eliminated from their final score, but I really think they are quite capable of shooting right around 1,020, 1,030. Shot by Chuck Keenan. Now let the ball work a little bit. Didn't quite come for Chuck. Chuck, 172 average bowler. Here's Rocky's shot right now. Now, Jay, uh, ready. Rocky left the five pin on his first ball. He didn't have a whole lot of drive in the back ends. Well, he's going to make the adjustment. He's going to move a couple boards to the right and see if he can develop a little more hook. And the next time he bowls on lane five, which will be in frame three, it should be a strike. All right. Up steps Chuck once again. Try to pick up those five pins now. Chuck's got a lifetime high game of 278 with a 610 series. He loves hunting, fishing, and bowling. How about that shot? You bet. Right there. And here comes Lou Flanagan. Lou for Talmadge Lanes. 18 marks, almost 19 marks. Talmadge Lanes will receive. Here's the shot. As he got across, stays that kind of tight, and leaves the 610. Lou's got a high game of 268 in a 671 series. He also enjoys fishing, hunting, and bowling. He started bowling about 20 years ago, Jay, at Talmadge Lanes and has been there ever since. All right, let's see I can pick up this 610 right now. Here's the shot. Looks good. You bet. Solid 610 he picked up there. Two to 22, so 20 marks separate the two teams. But Alba Janiski, Richard Bowers, had a big slip the first time up. Richard's a press operator at Chrysler. He also gets in a lot of golf in the summertime. Here's the shot. Oh, left the seven pin. John Heater, lead off man with a 208 average. Here's John's shot. Looks good. Coming. You bet. Well, that John got wired in last year, and I tell you, I thought he's never going to quit. Nine straight <laughs> strikes. 279. He had 11 out of 12. Shot by Richard. Looks good. You betcha. Give him a spare. All right. Stuffing up right now will be Dick Klein. For Eastgate Pro Bowl. Dick Klein's got a lifetime high game, 276. 676 lifetime high series. And he enjoys photography. Here's the shot. Pulled it across a little bit. Is he going to carry it? Knocked it out. Left the six pin, but that worked pretty good for him, right on the head. All right, Pat Flanagan. Pat had a spare last time up. Throws the ball, and he leaves the baby split. 310. Let's see if Dick. Dick missed his 10 pin last time. Well, he's going to give it a little more room this time. Jay's moved to the extreme left side of the approach. Just going to throw it nice and straight at the six pin. Whoa, Ooh, he pulled, pulled it. Again. He did, pulled it across. 18 now in the second frame. So let's see how we can do now with Pat Flanagan. Pat Flanagan's got a high game of 223. It's 567 high series. He enjoys hunting, fishing, and Beautiful. bowling. Nice pickup on that baby split. Here comes Debbie Bennett to strike. Here's a shot at that spare, Jay. Perfect way of picking it up. Bowling ball hits both pins. Here's the shot by Debbie. Moving in right toward that head pin. What a beautiful shot. Big double by Debbie Bennett. You know, Debbie's got one of those shots that is just perfect for the conditions, Jay. We've talked about this in the past. She keeps the ball right around the second arrow. Nice and soft. Good back end reaction. Gary Flanagan and right on the head pin. Leaves the big four. Mm, four, seven, six, ten. Boy, I hate to see that thing jump up, but I've got something going for you. Yeah, sure. It, it really uh, puts a, uh, a stopper on your game. and uh, But you're getting 180 pins of handicap, so you can have a few splits now and then, but not too many. That's right. Here's the shot. Working for the two, and that's important. Mm. Got one of them. Pick the 10 pin to give him 15 on the second frame. Bobby Moyers had a split first time up. Bobby's seven got ten. a couple 300s to his credit. He's got a lifetime high series of 769. And he loves to play softball. Here's the shot by Bobby, and it's coming. Good there shot. It. All right, a little high, but it carried good. 
So let's see how Chuck Keenan does. Chuck had five and then a spare the first time up. Here's the shot by Chuck. Moving in toward that pocket and... Ooh. Ooh, that's a toughie. Sometimes that will kick out on the light shot, Jay. You'll see a nice wall shot and the pins pop back and forth and mix them up a little bit. That time the head pin went between the four and the seven and didn't knock down either one of them. Three straight splits by the Talmadge team. Well, let's see what happens here. He's going to have to put the four and the ball between the four and the seven and hope that the four pin goes to the sideboard and takes out the seven. It's a very, very difficult spare. Can be done, but you just have to barely touch that five pin, right? Oh, just not quite enough. Sometimes you can hit the four and the five and lead mm -hmm. the seven. That's, That's the right. problem. That's right. Sure can. Rocky heater. 223 average. Mercy. Here's the shot by Rocky. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, he pulled it a little bit, but uh, he got a break. Rocky had those hands down. He said, oh, didn't pull it too much. He's just right. Lou Flanagan out of the ball well. Left a couple on the right side, the 3-6. Lou's got a high game of 268 with a lifetime high series of 671. You know, it's great to have the Greater Akron Bowling proprietors, of course, here with the pot of gold and the big Firestone Tournament of Champions coming well, up to you. It's not too far along, Jay. The Firestone Tournament of Champions Pro-Am will be April 22nd out at Riviera Lanes. So if you haven't uh, signed up yet or even qualified for the Pro-Am, check with any member of the Greater Akron Bowling proprietors and bowling at Great Pro-Am out at Riviera Lanes. Lou Flanagan with his spare right there. Two spares now. Here comes Richard Bowers. Rich had a spare last time up. Glad you folks are with us right here for the Pot of Gold. A lot of you join us every week. We thank you for it. Here's the Three. shot. That ball working. Oh, Ooh. knock it out. And it did. Left the five pin. Tommy Schlain's just not getting the breaks early on, Jay. Uh, they're getting some good hits, but they're not getting the good shaking action that we've seen in the past. Let's see how John does. He had a strike last time up. Oh, buried that ball in the ten pin. Jumped up at him. Good hit. Here's the shot now by Richard Bowers. You notice Richard, the way he holds that ball, let's see if it's coming. Yeah, it does. He holds the ball down. He doesn't hold it up in front of him. That's a timing maneuver that works yes. for him, Jay. You know, John Heater's got two 300 games to his credit and one 800 series. Here's the shot by John and carried. <laughs> Riding a little close. <laughs> Smiled as he walked down. Got his spare clean so far. Now Pat Flanagan. Picked up that baby split last time. Shot by Pat. Over to the left-hand side. Is it going to scatter? And ah, I got the break. Got the brakes on it. You know, Pat's throwing a conventional grip, uh, Jay. A lot of people nowadays have gone to the fingertip or the semi-fingertip, but uh, very seldom you ever see anybody using a uh, conventional grip, but Pat's elected to use it today. Shot by Dick Klein. Dick needs a start. There he is. Yeah, that'll loosen him up a little bit. He had two opens early going, but uh, that strike, that first strike always gets the butterflies out of the system, and he'll be back with some more strikes. Gary Flanagan. Had a big old split last time. Up, let's see if he can break this up. And did break it up. Kicked that big old 10 pin out, so gives him a chance for a spare. Debbie Bennett with two in a row, working for a turkey right now. You know, Debbie Bennett is our current bowling proprietor, bowler of the year, and she has been bowler of the year in the Akron five times. Oh, Ooh. left the big goal 5-7. Didn't quite get there. Here's the shot by Gary Flanagan. Gary Hold is on. hanging out. Oh, just at the last, it dropped off in the channel. <laughs> Let's see what Debbie does with this 5-7 right now. Had a double to start. Well, Debbie's going to move about three or four boards to the left of her starting position on the approach. Play the same target on the lane. That should straighten the ball out, catch the five, slide it over. What do you think? Oh, good try. A little Almost. too much. Good try for it. Here comes Chuck Keenan. Chuck had a split. We had three straight splits there for Pat and Gary and Chuck. Now they're getting unwound. Here's the shot. Heard Chuck's, that thumb uh, pop? Mm, thumb hole seems to be a little tight on him, Jay, whenever you hear that pop like that. It could be the thumb hole or the finger hole. 
two, four, five. All right. Bobby Moyers had a strike, had a split the first time, did a strike. Let's see what he does. Shot by Bobby. Moving, but failed to get that 8 pin. Once in a while, you'll see the 8 10 pop up on a shot like that. Just not quite there. Jay, what's happening is that they're not getting the good back in reaction. Actually, they're just a little too far left. The ball's not getting the good roll. They're going to have to make their adjustments to the right. Here's the shot. And oh. it carried. It looked for a moment like the 5 pin might hang there for a moment, but Chuck had it just Well, right. we've seen a lot of chops in the last couple of weeks. The 2 4 5 with the 5 pin being chopped off. That time it went down. Here's the shot now by Bobby. Out of the ball well. And carry. So, Lou Flanagan is clean so far. Two eights, two spares. Lou's a Shot roofing delivered. contractor, enjoys fishing. Left the 6-10. So, Rocky Heater had a big strike, and I mean he was solid. It's fair in the first, then a strike. Let's see what he does here in the third. He left the five pin last time on lane five. Jay, he's going to move a little bit to the right. Should it get a little better back in reaction? Should be a nice solid pitch. Oh, there was that eight ten we mm. were talking about. Nearly left it. Yeah, he's got to have to. Move, he's going to have to move a little bit more. Here's the shot right now, and the spare picked up by Lou Flanagan. So Lou makes his spare right here for the Talmadge Lanes. Let's see if Rocky makes his ten pin now. Of course, Rocky won the Junior Tournament of Champions out of Riviera a few years ago when he was 14 years old. He's got eight 300 games to his credit and 10 800 series. Here's the shot by Rocky, and it is good. Now we're getting ready to go. I bowled with Rocky one night when he had one of those 800 series, so between us, we both averaged 600 there, Jim. <laughs> <Right. laughs> you know, Ace Mitchells does a beautiful job. Tracy, come up here. You folks at Ace Mitchells have really been busy. Yeah, we've been doing a lot for this tournament. If you notice, the shirts that we donated for this tournament again this year. Yeah, they're beautiful, aren't they, Tracy? Yeah, they're good-looking ones. Oh, I noticed you had some angle shirts in there and some of the different ones to really make them stand out. Yeah, we sure do. We got some angle winning wear in there. We got a little bit of everything. We really appreciate Ace Mitchell. Nice to have you with us here, Tracy. Beautiful shot by Richard Bowers. Got his strike while we're gone. Here's the shot by John. And he carried for a big strike. Now they're starting to get loosened up now, Jay. Finding the uh, shot to the lanes, making the adjustments. All right, let's see how Pat does. Pat Flanagan could work on a double right now. Two spares, that a big strike. Let's see if Pat can put it in. So right now, 11 to 29 are the marks. 18 marks still separating the two teams. Of course, this is not much. Right in there. This oh. is play, of course, where the total score counts. Little heavy, Jim? Little heavy. You know, they're going to have to just make spare conversions because, uh, you know, you're getting 180 pins of handicap. There's not a whole lot of strikes, but we've got to make the spares. And so far, Talmadge Lanes is under the pace. They're going to have to start making some spares and throwing some strikes. The Klein looked like he might be there, and uh, I saw another A-10 pop up. The A did carry again, so Dick will be shooting at the 10 pin again. Had a strike his last time up. Let's see if Pat can carry his. 155. Average bowler, by the way. Got to go right at it. He did, but it's over to the right and kicked it around, Jim. We've seen that time after time after time. The ball sliding away to the right. You've got to go at these spares straight and cross alley. Here we go right now. Let's see what Dick does. Dick's had a little hard time on his spare so far, but that one is good. That was a much better shot. That time he was a little more relaxed on his arm swing. Ball came off his hand nice and clean. Good projection right to the 10 pin. Gary Flanagan missed the 7 pin last time up. Carried yeah, the big old break. strike. That's what Tom H. Lanes is going to have to do, Jay. They're going to have to get a few breaks, loosen them up a little bit. When you're loose, you start making good shots. Debbie with 56 in the third, a big split last time. Let's see if she can get started again. Good concentration. Her eyes are glued in on her target. Watch the follow through right to the target. Mm, up pop the 10 pin. They've had a bunch of those 10 pins. Watch this last strike, Jay. The left side crossing over to the right. Going to get the lucky break off the sideboard. Coming back, tripping the four pin forward. That's what you got to have. You got to have some breaks. All right, let's see if Debbie can get her spare down. Jack Keenan will be up there for Talmadge Lanes. Shot by Debbie, out of the ball well. You bet. 
dead center. Good spare shooter, Jay. It's, uh, you know, you keep that ball nice and straight like that. The spares become very easy. All you really have to do is follow through. You know, a 16-pound bowling ball knocking down a three-pound pin. All you have to do is get it there. You don't have to spin it or turn it. Chuck had a spare last time up. That ball's working pretty good. Did he get there? Not quite. Left the 245. Moving up now will be Bobby Moyers. Bobby had a split, then a strike, and a spare. Left the eight pin last time up. Here's the shot. Is it digging? It is. You bet. Bobby sort of came out of that one a little early. Jay pulled it a little bit to the inside of his target. With just enough oil on the lanes to hold it off for the perfect strike. Chuck will try for his spare now. Here's the shot, a little bit over to the right. Mm. Eastgate will have to shoot a uh, scratch better than a thousand, right, Jim? At least that, Jay, they're having five pins taken away from their score. Eastgate, or uh, Talmadge Lanes is having 180 some pins of handicap added to their score. Rocky Eater. Spare, strike, spare, this should be a strike. Did it carry? Not quite. He struck on this lane last time. He's sparing on the other lane, but was a little bit heavy left the four pin. Rocky's just taking his time trying to figure the lanes out. You know, when you're having a little bit of trouble trying to get strikes, whenever you're getting nine pin spares, there's really no problem. He'll make the adjustments. Lou Flanagan, dropical shot, gives him 32 marks down the fourth with their handicap marks of 188 pins. Shot by Rocky. Turns that ball. Went right at it. You know, Tommy Schlaes, Jay's got three strikes in the fourth frame with two opens. What they're going to have to do, they're going to have to use those strikes for doubles. They are just a little bit under the pace of 1,000. And, you know, we're predicting anywhere between 975 and 1,000 to make the top 10 positions. We've only got about three more weeks to go in the qualifying round, then we get into match play. Richard Bowers has a strike up. Looks Here good. Comes the shot. Yeah, back. that's there number one. One of these strikes used for a doubles, and that's what they have to do. John Heater needs a big double right here for his team. Shot by John. Oh, whoop, jump that big old 410. Mm. It's one thing they don't need, Jim. No, sirree, not when you're having pins taken away at the end of the game. Uh, again, John's on a strike on the fourth frame. Uh, my suggestion is just go for the one because there is a lot of oil built up in the middle and it's going to be extremely difficult to get the ball to cross over enough to slide the four into the ten. For those who don't bowl a whole lot, there's a shot by John, picked up the four pin. Each one of the players for Eastgate has to average better than 200. They plan to be up there in the uh, top ten, right in that area. So here comes Platt Flanagan. Had had a miss last time up. Holds he the ball down to his side, Jay. That's for timing. Again, if it works for him, that's what counts. Left the big old clothesline right there. That is the one, two, four, seven. That can be a little toughy sometimes, but he has a good chance of making the spare. Decline. Had a spare last That's time good. up, and no, oh, it boy, looked oh good. Boy. There's the eight ten. Jay, what's happening? What is happening is the ball's not finishing. Uh, they seem to be playing too far left. All of our players today on, on the pair, on the TV pair, are playing too far left. They've got to move to the right and get some more back end reaction. There's the shot for you. That's the perfect way of making that spare, Jay. If you try to go in front of the one pin, you could chop it off and leave the four pin. All four pins have got to go out with the bowling ball. So Pat picks up his spare. Let's see what Dick does. All right, gets one out of the two, of course, for that big split, 65 now in the fifth frame. John Heater has 88. Watch this spare, Jay, exactly what we've been talking about. The ball takes out all four pins. That's the way it's made. Gary could get a chance for a big double for Talmadge Lanes now. Shot by Gary. Oh, mm, the big boy. four, right on the hit pin. Dead solid. Debbie Bennett on lane number five. Two strikes, a split, and a spare. Let's see if Debbie's made her adjustments to compensate for that split she had last time on lane five. There it is. Every pin off the lanes. 
Well, that comes with experience, doesn't it, Jim? That's for sure. You know, now Gary's got to go for at least two, Jay. We, he's working on a strike. Every penny misses, it will be deducted, so he's got to go at least for two. And pick two of them up for the 6-10. 50 now to R.M. in the fifth frame. So Bobby Moyers could help the Eastgate team with a big double right here. You know, here. Bobby hasn't been bowling quite as long as Rocky and Debbie and John and the other people, but uh, in his short period of time, he did, he has a third-place finish in the C CTBA tournament out at Stonehenge Place. And carry it with right, a big Bob. double. Wasn't quite sure it was right there, but he smiled a little bit as he steps back to take that double. Well, he was smiling because he got the break because he the 8-10 was the last two pins to go down. <laughs> Chuck Keenan, they just start right here. Check out a big old split in the second frame and a miss there in the fourth frame. Let's see if he got started. There he is. Good shot. You know, Chuck takes three steps, Jane. You remember last week we had a young man take seven steps. Again, whatever works for you, that's what you should use. Chuck came back, says, Jay Bird, about time. <laughs> <laughs> Here comes Rocky Heater. Rocky had a spare strike, spare, spare. Oh, here's will be Lou Flanagan. Lou will be trying for his double right here. For Talmadge. Here's the shot by Lou. Could be. What do you think? Get the oh, break. Oh, left the five pin. Good try for Lou. Here's Rocky. Rocky has yet to throw a strike on lane five. He's been, actually, the ball hasn't been driving well for him on lane five. Let's see if he's made the adjustments. Still, Still light light. again, wasn't it? Still a little bit light left, the two, four, five. Shot now by Lou. Got Good his shot. bear. You betcha. 76 in the fourth now. He's clean all the way. 182 average bowler. Good bowler. So Rocky will get a chance for the 2 4 5. You know, in practice, Jay Rocky was playing the extreme outside line right around that first arrow. But we moved over to the TV pair, and he elected to move in to around the 15th board. There's the shot that will carry out the three. You're always glad when that one's over. You can chop it so many ways. That's one of the toughest pairs to make for a scratch player. It's the 2 Rich 4 5. Richard Bowers working on three in a row. He averages 179. Had a split, two spares, two strikes. Tell me, Chad, tell me, Chlain's had a good frame there, Jay. We can uh, use a couple more strikes. Put him right back in the hunt. Here's the shot. And there it is. is. All right, How's three in a row. Shot? Three in a row. You betcha. Here comes John Heater. John needs a start here. Had a split last time up. Left the 410. Shot by John. Is it enough? You bet. That's a good pitch, Jay. He moved a little bit to the right, softened up the shot a little bit. Got the good back end reaction, and that's what you got to have to throw strikes. And that's what Eastgate has got to start doing. They've got to get some strikes going, because right now, they're about five marks off the pace, about 50 pins off the pace. So that means a lot of doubling, right? A lot of doubling. Pat Flanagan. Pat had a spare last time. Had the clothesline. Let's see what this one does. And left the 2 4 5. All right, here comes Dick Klein. Dick had a big old split. You notice where Dick is starting, he's starting left to center on the approach. Now, when he throws the ball, he's going to try to compensate by drifting a little bit and keeping it right around the second arrow. He's still a little bit too le far left, Jay. Uh, he's just going to have to move everything to the right to get more back in reaction. Left the 5 pin. Shot now by Pat. Ball down to his side. Ooh, pulled it a little. Picked off the four pin. Give him 91 now in the sixth frame. Let's see if Dick can make his five pin. A five pin is a good practice shot, Jay. Uh, whenever you have a five pin spare, you should use that as a practice shot for the first time on the first ball. Mm, got away from him out in the oil, did it, Jim? Again, he didn't make the adjustments on the five pin. He yeah. threw his strike ball at it, and it slid on him. It Just like the first ball, it slid to the right. So did that one. He's going to have to move to the right. Gary Flanagan. And it's still falling. Left all, picked up all but the five pin. So chance now for a spare, and here comes Debbie. Debbie had a strike last time up. You know, Jay, when uh, Debbie went to Ball Guitar Columbia to, bowl, to Columbia to bowl in the FIQ tournament, she came away with three medals, finishing second in all events. Look at that. 
All right. I thought he was going to be a little heavy right there, but right there, Terry Good for a big double. Moving in now, of course, will be Gary trying for a spare. Here's the shot. And picked it up. All right. Bobby could help the team out tremendously right here. Needs this big old turkey. Started off with a split, strike, spare, then a double. Let's see how Bobby does. 203 average bowler. Here's his shot. That's a good Is pitch. Is it enough? You're That's back. a good pitch, Jay. He slowed that ball down to give it the reaction needed. And that's the one thing about the better players. They know how to change their speed. Sometimes it's very, very important. So Just let's see what we can do right now. It's Chuck Keenan. He'd like to have a big old double right here for Talmadge Lane. Boy, a strike right here would really help their cause. Good shot. Oh, it kicked out the five. It looked like it would carry. Knocked out that five pin. All right. Gives him a chance now for a good spare. Rocky doing some adjustment on the ball right there as we get ready for Chuck Keenan to pick up his bear. Chuck's going to have to go right at it. Cross alley. We've talked about it in the past. Let's see what he does. Here's the shot. Hurry. Oh, pulled it just over to the right. 78 there for Chuck now in the sixth frame. Let's see how Rocky does. Rocky heater. Extremely to the left. Holds the ball out to the right. Again, that's a good timing move. we got a good view here. Split screen. Good follow through for Rocky. Right in there. I'll tell you, nothing can stand for that kind of gym. <laughs> when you throw the ball like that, Jay, you know, Rocky came down and practiced a few weeks ago and had 22 strikes in a row here at the University of Akron. He's quite that's capable right. of throwing a lot of strikes. <laughs> Lou Flanagan and Lou's on the nose a little bit there. Got eight. Came out all right. Left the 6-10. 26 marks now. Or East Key. Are they down some, Kelly? A little bit hitting that uh, thousand mark? A little bit now. You know, going over the bio sheets from Talmadge Lanes, all of these bowlers have been living and bowling in the Talmadge area for most of their life, and that's really what we like to see. We all like right. to see the people patronize all their uh, their establishments. Jim, we're through the sixth frame right now, and it's 26 to 41 marks at this time. We're going to take a little break right here, and we're going to be right back. If you're a working woman, too, I'd like to share something with you. A wonderful monthly magazine called Working Woman. Working Woman, like us. If you're serious about your career, Working Woman is serious about helping you. Do you want more pay, more respect on the job, faster advancement? Working Woman can help you get them. Every month, Working Woman opens your eyes to the business world, becoming a leader, improving management techniques, career change opportunities, office politics, handling your money, balancing your career and personal life. And when you order Working Woman, you'll also get free with your paid subscription, Boss Lady, a book by a woman at the top that tells you how to get there, too. If you're serious about your career, if you want to achieve success, Working Woman is serious about helping you. Here's how to order. Get the next 12 issues of Working Woman for only $12. That's half the newsstand price. Just phone 800-228-6266, toll free. That's 12 issues of Working Woman for only $12. Phone 800-228-6266 now. Right back at the pot of gold, we have bowled through frame number seven. And Kelly, how are we doing? Are we close to that 1,000 mark for each team now? Really close now? All right, as we get ready, we'll tell you what happened in the seventh frame. You'll also be able to see it on your screen. John Heater had a spare, had a nine and a spare as he steps up on lane number six right now. They need some doubles. Jay, we've been going over the scores uh, during the break. Uh, Eastgate Pro Bowl is about 30 pips under the 1,000 pace. And Talmadge Lanes is right on the 1,000 pace. So both teams are going to have to get it together and finish strong in the last three frames. Richard Bowers had a big old split. While we were gone, picked up one of those. Let's see how he does now. Kicked it all the way around the five pin, and it wouldn't fall. Had the seven nine in the seventh frame. See what John does here. Gotta go over. Oh, mm. I carried that. I, <laughs> you know, I thought that eight pin was going to stay there for a minute, Jim. It caught the oil and backed off a little bit and almost chopped the uh, eight pin. So let's see what Richard does now. All right, picked up his spare. 
You know, when you got no handicap, you have to bowl every ball and bowl well, don't you, Jim? These skate Pro Bowls getting five pins taken away from their final score. They have to bowl scratch. Again, we we're talking right around 975 to 1,000 to make our top 10 match play. Right now, they're right on the borderline. Dick Klein could really use a double here. And that's Boy. a big goal, five pin ten. Mm. Didn't quite finish for him. Pat Flanagan had a big spare last time up. Let's see how Pat does right now. Talmadge Lane. Got by Ooh. Pat, and it looked like it, but Carrie, the big four pin, jumped up at him. Just not getting the breaks today, Jay, that we've seen in the past. Getting some good hits, but not getting a good carry. Got to slide the five across into the ten. A little bit heavy. All right. He's having a hard time. He's 180 average bowler, and he just hasn't been able to find it yet, Jim. Let's see how Pat does. Right at Got it. Got the Pat, you bet. All right. The way to make it. Here comes Debbie. Debbie had a spare last time up. Left the 10 pin. Hit well, the 10 pin stayed. Got it for a spare. Nice Here's soft the shot. shot. That's the same shot John had a while ago, just a little bit light as it didn't quite come in for there, and John left the one, two, eight. And now here comes Gary Flanagan. Gotta have some spares, Jay. They're getting close to the end, or real close. Gotta have some marks. Mm, left the five, eight. Well, that's a spare you can make. Let's see if Debbie can make the adjustments here. Now she came in real light, missed the hip into the right. She's going to have to move her approach to the right, move her target to the right, and get a little better back end reaction to cross over. Hurry. Mm -hmm. They're just Jump too far here. left, Jay. They're, uh, they're just playing the oil too deep. The ball's not finishing on the end for them. All right, let's see how we can do now with this pickup. Carry 156 average bowler. Could use this bear right here. All right. That's five marks in a row for Tommy Slains, and that's really all they have to do in the right. remaining three lanes. Stay clean. Stay away from the splits. Stay away from the chops. All right, here comes Bobby Moyers, four in a row, working on his fifth right now. Just big pitch for Bobby because he's the only one who's got a strike up in the seventh frame who can use it for a double. They've got two opens in the eighth frame. A must strike. Shot Looks by Bobby. Good. Heavy. Jump on the end. Came in on him tight, did the Jim? Snapped right at the last minute, Jay. Threw the ball well, had good speed, hit his target. Chuck Keenan. Chuck had a spare. Nine had a spare last time up. Shot by Chuck. Looks good. All yeah. right. Now Mitch Lanes is starting to make the come that they, they've done in the past. Last year, the Tommy Lanes team won this tournament by making charges in the late going frames. All right, Bobby Moyers needs a spare right here. Here's the shot. All right. Lou Flanagan working on a double. Lou had a big strike. Big pitch here, frame. Jay. Mm -hmm. Well, if he can use this strike here, it's a big boost. That would give him six marks here in the eighth frame. See what he does. Out of that ball, good. good. Get oh. the break. Would you believe the old 5-7? Jumped up at him. So here comes Rocky Heater. Rocky had a big old split, the 5-7. Buried the ball, and the 5-7 just stood there looking at you. He's been hitting lane six pretty well. See what happens. Oh, yeah. They big can't, ball. Can't get the same reaction on lane five that he's getting on lane six. Shot now by Luke. Working on that split. Little bit heavy there. 133 makes him 142. Now in the eighth frame. Time running out. Now is the time you have to go. Both teams are on the borderline, Jay. They're going to have to get it together. Eastgate's going to have to put a few doubles together in the last two frames. So moving up will be Richard Bosch. Richard had a nine and a spare. Let's see how he does. Drop Richard has uh, been real consistent throughout the match, Jay, getting nine spares throughout, three strikes in a row. Got to hurry. Not quite, but he got a good kick back there. Left the 3-5. Well, John needs to start right here. The Eastgate team must go the next two frames heavily. 
Time is running out. John's out of the ball. Turned it and carried the big one over the six over there, but the seven stayed with him. Eastgate Pro Bowl J is about 50 pins off the predicted pace. They're going to have to throw strikes. Shot now by Richard. All right, picked up that spare. Talmadge continues to move. Shot by Johnny's good. Here comes Pat Flanagan. Pat is 155 average bowler, has 110 in the seventh with a spare. Moving Pat, in on lane number six. Pat just keeps the ball in play every shot. Jay just nice and straight right down the middle, staying away from the splits. As the shot left, the 4 7. Another easy spare. Right now, Tommy Slings is in pretty good shape, Jay. They're right on that borderline. They just have to stay clean. Shot by Dick Klein. Let's see where Dick goes. Delight. Left of 1 2 4. Frederick and Bowling Proprietors bringing you Pot of Gold. And Jim and I have a radio show on Whistler Monday through Friday, Jim. Called This Week in Bowling, we give you scores and highlights and interviews. 6.30, Monday through Friday, 13.50 on your dial, your AMF dial, Whistler Radio. We give away some bowling games, and I don't know what all that is. We have a good time with it. We hope you'll tune it in. Nice pickup by Pat Flanagan. See how Dick does. They got out of the ball a little better. Is that enough? Man. No chop. Mm. Dick just hasn't been able to get it together. Jay's got some bad breaks on the first shot. He leaves easy spares and chops them. Things are not going well for him. Here comes Gary Flanagan. Here's the shot by Gary. Working in pretty good. Oh, left the big old 10 pin. That ball hit heavily. Debbie Bennett. Debbie with 151 in the eighth frame. Left the eighth pin a moment ago. Here's the shot by Debbie. Scatter and left another split. Right into that big old 5-7. Did you have that a moment ago? 5-7 in the There's third There's been frame. quite a few 5-7s left on lane 5 today. Uh, Rocky left one. Bobby, I believe, left one. Just not Here's finishing as hard. Good pickup. All right. Gary gets his. Let's see if Debbie can slide this over now. Here's the shot. Looking good. Almost. Same shot she had a while ago and just barely missed it. 160 down the ninth. Moving in will be Chuck Keenan. Chuck had a big strike working. Let's see how he does. Jay, if he can use this for a double, that would really put a plus side on the Talmadge Lanes team because right now they're, they've got some extra pins to play with. Sure. They're a little bit over that thousand mark. And they're making their spares. In. Shot and There it is. Day. A double. Oh, big double by Chuck. That's really important to him right now. Bobby Moyers. Tell me, Chalices has 11 marks out of the last 12 shots. Somebody in the Eastgate Pro Bowl team is going to have to take charge. you got to have strikes. They're in a must-strike situation. Perfect right. shot. Right in there. Beautiful shot by Bobby. Here comes Lou Flanagan. Lou had a big split, the 5-7 last time up here in the last frame. Let's see how he does here down. 142 in the eighth frame. Shot by Lou. Cross it. In the middle, but left the six pin. A makeable spare. They can pick up five more marks this frame. 48 through the eighth, by the way. Rocky Heater. Rocky had a strike last time up. Let's see if he's conquered this number five lane. It's been giving him a lot of problems. Not getting the back end reaction that he would like. See what happens. Found it. You bet. Leaned Rock. into it, Jim. Rocky's not really throwing the ball badly. He's just not getting a lane reaction that he wants. Shot right here. That'll carry. You bet. <laughs> Lou Flanagan with his big spare gives him five more marks here in the night frame. 38 now to 54 as we go into our final 10th frame right here for the Pot of Gold at the Akron University Lanes. And Jim, you did a beautiful job here. Hey, Spitchels, what a great job they did, Tracy. I tell you what, we have those beautiful shirts right here. They're nice. Yeah, they're real good-looking shirts. we got a big variety out there today. Um, 
glad to be a part of the tournament again this year. We're really proud of Ace Mitchell's ball. They've helped us so much in drilling of balls and what have you. And if you can find everything you might need in bowling supplies there. Here's the shot by Richard Bowers. Talmadge Lanes is not giving up, Jay. They've had all marks except for one shot since the break. They are really putting a charge on here in the last three frames. John Heater, they need every mark they can get. John's a little light. Left the big two, four, five, eight. So 188 pins to Talmadge Lanes, and we'll be checking as our scorekeeper, Kelly Lindhart, quickly goes over to see how close we are and where we are. Richard could double right here. Shot by Richard, and here it comes. And the four, no six pin. It'd be the four pin if he was right-handed. <laughs> Jay, doing some quick figuring here, Eastgate Pro Bowl. If everybody would strike out from this point, they would shoot right around 951. I don't think that was going, he almost made that, but it looks like they're going to be a little short. Little bit short for John Heater, 169. John's a 208 average bowler. Didn't quite find it today. Had that great big 279, wasn't it? Last yep. year he shot 279. Yep. He had 11 out of 12 strikes. Shot by Richard, and here it comes. That's the place to leave it if you're going to leave it. 190, a good game for a 179 bowler. Good shooting by Richard right here for Talbot Lanes. All right, let's see how Dick does. Dick has struggled today. Here's his shot. Turned that one more in, didn't he, Jim? Well, he, he gave it a little better shot, Jay. He had a little better follow-through, a little better release, but he's still too far left. He's, mm -hmm. uh, you know, from the time he lets the ball down to the time it hits the pins, it balls in the oil, and it doesn't have a good ch a ch a chance to turn over and get the action. Pat Flanagan tried to get the big strike, left the seven pin, but hit heavy. 147 now the night for Pat. Here's the shot, Bedick. Out on the lanes, and it'll be a good shot. Picked up his spare. Okay. Pat Flanagan needs a spare right here. Boy, I tell you, Talmadge keeps marking. That's all they have to do is keep marking. Right now, he's got a tough spare, though. Going to have to go right at it. See how he does. He, he did. did. Not too much. All, all right. right. It'll, it'll hold on. Everybody's yelling, hold on, hold on. It'll stay there. Pat turned around, smiled a little bit. It stayed right on there. <laughs> so but that's everybody old. yelling about. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Shot bedict. Here's a filler for him. Out on the lanes. All right, and picked up all but the big old ten pin for 129 for Dick. Here comes the fill for Pat now. He could have 167 if he could strike here. Here's the shot. And he did. All right, 167. Everybody bowling over their average chain. That's what it takes to qualify. Debbie Bennett with 160 down the ninth. Had a big old split last time. A couple of splits. She had a split in the third and a split also in the ninth. They were both five sevens. Here's the shot by Debbie. Good pitch. You bet. Perfect shot. You know, Debbie also won the Ohio State Match Game Championships this year, Jay, back in January. Just an, another title added to the many, many that she already has. She's had one of the best years I've ever heard for an amateur, you know, for anybody, really. Beautiful shot by Gary Flanagan. Big strike. Honored yeah. recently also by the Dapper Dan Club here in Akron, a few weeks back. Kelly did well, well too, Jay, back in that state match games. Kelly, what'd you do, finish the third or fourth? Finish fourth. So we got some great bowlers here in the Akron oh, area, right. Jay. Kick the five guy. Shot right now, Gary could really help with a big old double right here. Let's see what he does. Pulled it a little bit across and left the two, four, five. Watch Debbie's last strike, Jay. Coming in a little light. The ball's got so much action on it, the pins are just popping around. That's a beautiful strike. Another shot here working for the turkey right now. Pull him up for another big turkey for 190. Coming out well with two misses in there due to splits in there for a big 190. Three misses, by the way. Three opens, I should say, for a big 190 game. Here's the shot right now for the pickup, and it is good. Had a strike, got him a spare for 135 for Gary. 
Talmadge Lanes continues to move a big 680 right now for the third man down. Chuck Keenan is working on three in a row. Up steps Bobby Moyers now for Eastgate. Bobby had a strike 177 in the eighth. He could have a big game. Bobby's been throwing the ball real well day today, Jay. He's just got a few bad breaks. Every ball's been right there. Nice what shot. A shot. Mm, perfect shot. Big double there for Bobby. All they can do, Jay, is just keep throwing strikes. Uh, the way it stands right now, they could put themselves right around ninth or eighth place and hope that the teams are coming up the next three weeks bowl poorly. A big seven count for Chuck, working on that big double right there. That double helped him out. Gave him 125 down the eighth frame. Get a spare, still be in the 160s. All right, here's Bobby Moyer once again. There's the shot from Bobby. Good pitch. You bet. Beautiful shot. Beautiful strike for Bobby. 237 possible. Mm. Here's the shot now by Chuck. See if he can get his spare. And he did. 145 now in the ninth frame. He could be in the 165s. This last strike by Bobby Moyers. You couldn't ask for a better pitch. Every pin in the pits. Beautiful. Bobby will try to wrap it up now with four in a row for a big 237. Here's the shot by Bobby. Out a little Gotta far. Hurry. Didn't quite get mm -hmm. back, but a great game. 235. Good, Good game, ball. Bobby. Now, let's see what Chuck. Chuck is going to fill right now. Chuck Keenan could have a big 165 for Talmadge. Is Talmadge over the 1,000 mark yet? Uh, They're close? right around 1,010. All right, here's the shot. Now. Every pin's important. Got seven. We give him 142, 4842, by the way. All right. Rocky Heater and Lou Flanagan will wrap up this pot of game bowling right here. Talmadge Lanes can still have an open in the 10th frame. Luke can still throw an open. Talmadge Lanes will still be over that 1,000 mark, but it's very important to get to marks because every pin counts in qualifying. Rocky Heater out of that ball. It's charging. You bet you three in a row now. Rocky's had a good shot on lane six all day, but he's had some problems on lane five, and that's been the difference. Here's the shot. It's charging, and it's a beautiful shot in left the 10 pin. Lou Flanagan, 161 now in the ninth. Right around that 210 if he spares, isn't it? You're right, Jim, right in there close. Close to that area there. 1,010. 1,000. Yes. They could finish with 1,023 if he spares and strikes. The best Eastgate Pro Bowl can do is 932. Here comes Rocky again wow. and laid it in there. Left the 10 pin. Go out at 203. Here's the shot right now that's imported for Lou. And he got it. So we'll see where that will move. The Talmadge Lanes. They'll move up there, and we'll check here in just a moment. Probably about fifth place. Fifth Rocky place right there. His spare for 203. All right, here's the shot now by Lou. And Lou's ball is moving quickly for a big strike. Gives him a 181 for a 1023. And moves them into fifth place. We're going to be right back. I'm Tom Watson. I write for Golf Digest as a play editor along with Jack Nicholas, Tom Kite, and Bernhard Langer. We concentrate on offering you a level of professional instruction in print you just won't find anywhere else. Golf Digest brings you every shot in the game. Every situation, every strategy, taught clearly and explicitly by the best teachers and players in the game. And remember this, Golf Digest instruction in print isn't like a lesson you listen to and hope you'll remember. You have it, any time to reread and refer to and review, to show to your partner and hide from your opponents. Whatever, it's yours to keep, and you'll use it. 
Call toll-free 800-228-6605 for a year of Golf Digest, only $12.77. 46% off the newsstand price, and you'll receive as a bonus tips from the tour free. Call 800-228-6605 now. Be a winner. Read Golf Digest. What happens occasionally, Eastgate Pro Bowl, the team never really found the lanes here, and they dropped out of contention for the top ten, and Talmadge Lanes went into fifth place. Now, next week, of course, we have another great couple of teams coming in, Akron Recreation and the Northgate Lanes. You join us for next week for Pot of Gold Bowling, and we'll see you then. Do you know this guy? Bet not. That's why he carries the home video services membership card. He's the video maniac. You movie lovers, don't wait for him to come out on TV. Just motor on down. The Greater Akron Bowling Proprietors Association presents...